This is a demonstration of problem 1023B, Accounting for Equity Investments. The beginning balance sheet of Tech Source Company included a $700,000 investment in Taylor Stock, a 20% ownership. During the year, Tech Source completed the following investment transactions, and the problem requires that we journalize the transactions for the year for Tech Source. The first transaction on March 3rd states that we purchased 5,000 shares at $13 per share of Josh Software Common Stock as a long-term equity investment representing 3% ownership and no significant influence. So for this investment, we are going to treat this as a normal trading investment. So now we need to record the investment. So 5,000 shares purchased at $13 per share would be $65,000. So we'll debit our equity investment $65,000 and we'll credit cash for $65,000. The next information on May 15th states that we received a cash dividend of $0.69 cents per share on the Josh investment. So again, we have 5,000 shares at $0.69 cents dividend per share is $3,450. So we would debit cash for $3,450. And for this investment, which is a trading investment, we would credit dividend revenue for $3,450. The next information we're given states that on December 15th, we received a cash dividend of $100,000 for the Taylor investment. The problem told us that we had a $700,000 investment in Taylor stock representing a 20% ownership. So this investment is going to be accounted for using the equity method. When we receive a cash dividend on an equity investment, we debit cash for the $100,000, but instead of crediting dividend revenue, we're actually going to credit the investment account itself, equity investments Taylor. So dividends actually will reduce our investment account when we use the equity method. On December 31st, it says that we received Taylor's annual report showing $100,000 of net income. The Taylor investment is accounted for using the equity method. For the equity method, we increase the investment account and record investment income for our percentage ownership in the investee's net income. So we take the $100,000 of net income for Taylor and we multiply it by our ownership percentage of 20% and we're going to increase the investment by debiting equity investments Taylor for $20,000 and crediting revenue from investments for $20,000. Next, it states that on December 31st, we received Josh's annual report showing $620,000 of net income for the year. But remember, we are not using the equity method to account for the Josh company stock, so we would not record any entry for our percentage ownership in Josh's net income. Also on December 31st, it states that the Taylor stock fair value at year end was $620,000. However, remember that we are accounting for the Taylor investment using the equity method, so we do not record any change in the fair market value of the stock if we're using the equity method. However, the Josh Common stock fair value at year end was $14 per share. So we do need to record an adjustment for the Josh's common stock that we have to record, to record the fair market value at year end. We own 5,000 shares of Josh common stock and it's now valued at $14 per share. So the Josh stock has a fair value of $70,000. We originally purchased this stock for $65,000, so we've had a $5,000 unrealized holding gain on this investment. So we'll record that as an adjustment by debiting the fair value adjustment equity investments account for $5,000 and crediting unrealized holding gain equity investments for $5,000. The third part, second part of this problem states to post these transactions to T accounts 
to determine the December 31, 2018 balances related to the investment and the investment accounts. So as we have been making the entries in Part 1, I have been having those amounts posted to T accounts. So in the beginning when we bought the Josh stock, we debited the equity investment account for $65,000. Our equity investments Taylor account had a beginning balance of $700,000. We decreased that investment account for the $100,000 of dividends that we received, and we increased the equity investment account for our 20% ownership in, their, in Taylor's net income. So that account at the end of the year has a $620,000 debit balance. Now, for the Josh stock, we had a fair value adjustment at December 31st to increase the fair value to the market value. So we debited fair value adjustment for $5,000, and we credited unrealized holding gain for $5,000. When we recorded our percentage ownership in the Taylor investment, we credited revenue from investments for $20,000, and when we recorded the dividends that we received on the Josh stock, we credited dividend revenue. So these are all of the T accounts that were involved in these investment accounts. The third part of this problem states to prepare text sources partial balance sheet at December 31st from our answers in requirement two. So for this portion of the problem, we're going to show tech source company's partial balance sheet at December 31st that has the investments that we have talked about in this problem. Our equity investments, that's the investment in the Josh stock, would be shown at $70,000, the fair market value. That is equal to the cost of the investment originally, $65,000, plus the additional $5,000 for the fair value adjustment that we made at December 31st. The equity investment in Taylor would be shown at the amount that we have in our T account, $620,000. Part 4 states, where is the unrealized holding gain or loss associated with the Josh stock reported? So that is this $5,000. That unrealized holding gain associated with the stock, Josh stock is included in the income statement and in other income and expenses. And that is the conclusion of the demonstration for problem 1023B.